So the Cowboys take on the Texans tomorrow, and these are going to be the three things that I'm watching in the game. Alright, Cowboys Collective, uh, I just want to touch base with you. I know it's been a while, and I know I'm already getting to the Texans game, and some of you are probably wondering, hey, where was the recap on the Cardinals game? And if you want my recap, here it is. It looked too much like 2020 between the fumbles and the injuries. Man, I just want to move on and just leave it in the past just like last year because that's exactly what it looked like. But let's just jump in and I want to talk about the three things that I'm looking for in the game tomorrow. So let's just start with the offensive side of the ball. Um, obviously, Amari Cooper is going to be back, uh, but that's not really what I'm going to be looking at there. You know, yes, he's going to be lighter this season and you know there's going to be some indications on how his ankles looking but other than that I'm not too worried about it you know Dak's not going to be in there which kind of seals that for preseason that we won't see him for a single game in the preseason uh, I know there's mixed feelings on that you know some people are wanting to see him get out there just because he hasn't played since October last year other people aren't worried you know they think it's better to rest him uh, I want to know what your, is your opinion on this offseason. Do you think we should have given Dak some minutes or are you just not concerned at all and we just let him heal and be 100% for the Bucks game week one? But, yeah, the thing I'm looking for on offense in terms of this preseason game is the offensive line. That's where I'm interested in. Um, I know we kind of have a lot of the starters in mind, you know, Tyron Smith, Leal Collins are going to be our starting tackles. No one is going to surpass Zach Martin at the right guard position. The guy is just, you know, probably one of the best in the league, if not the best. I think the interest comes around that left guard position. I know they had Connor Williams in that center last game, but I think, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, whether it's going to end up being Connor Williams or the other Connor and Connor McGovern. Uh, the latest rumors are there are teams interested in trading for Connor McGovern, so we'll see how that left guard position plays out. And the other position, center, you know, there seemed to be that battle that I think all but ended last week. I think they've indicated that Tyler Biotish will be the starting center, but it's good to have some depth there. You know, I think there was initially a plan in place to bring in Joe Looney after week one You'd, when the contract wasn't fully guaranteed. Uh, obviously, the Giants, you know, kind of foiled that plan for us. So I think there's some interest in, yeah, who's going to be that backup, whether it is, you know, someone playing across. I think um, Matt Farniok, he has some experience at uh, center who we drafted. So we'll see how that plays out. But, yeah, what I'm just looking for is, you know, some clean snaps all the way throughout. You know, we don't want the ball being snapped on the ground. We don't want to be snapped way over his head, just right in the hands. That's what we're looking for. So the second thing I'm looking for in this game is the defensive tackle position. You know, obviously last game Neville Gallimore got injured, expected to miss some time. I've seen different reports, you know, some people are saying four to six weeks and it looks like he could be back for week two. There's other reports saying six to eight. Uh, I'm not sure where the accuracy is between either one, but I think this puts a lot more emphasis on the defensive tackle position. This preseason, obviously, I think Neville Gallimore was a guy that we expected to be taking up some, you know, a lot of snaps in that position. I think it's gonna give some insight to, you know, what is the new rotation gonna look like? Are we gonna, you know, bring in more of, you know, Osa Digizua? Is it gonna be more Brent Urban, Carlos Watkins, Quentin Bohanna? Like, we have a lot of depth there. But I think it's just gonna be about you know finding the right combination of guys. I thought I think it's also gonna give a look into whether the Cowboys decide to ultimately pursue a veteran. I know everyone has been calling for Geno Atkins out there, but I'm pretty confident in what we have at defensive tackle. You know the the, the depth on the defensive line this year is significantly deeper and stronger than last season. So I'm I'm less concerned, but it's just more from a place of intrigue because. You know, I think Neville Gallimore really, you know, set himself aside from those other guys um, that he was going to take, you know, a big chunk of the snaps this season. So it'll be interesting to see what that new rotation looks like. What do you guys think? Who do you think is going to, you know, kind of fill in for the Neville Gallimore spot? Do you think they pursue a veteran uh, or do you think they're just going to, you know, replace those snaps in-house? And who do you think is going to step up? 
you know, if it's in house for me, I think it's going to be Osa Digizua, uh, the big boy out of uh, UCLA. You know, I think he he brings a similar game. You know, Quinn Bohanna is definitely going to have his role in this team. You know, is that one tech that you know really plug up the middle, and you know, Brent Urban's going to have his role being such a phenomenal run defender. So I'm not I'm not too worried, but I think Neville Gallimore is you know a difficult player to play uh, to replace on this team. And the last thing I'm looking for is, you know, Kelvin Joseph. Last game, obviously, had his troubles against uh, Christian Kirk. He did push off. We all know that. You know, I've seen everyone talking about it. And I'm, I'm in agreement with those who said it was a push off for sure. But it's not what I'm looking for there. It's just the way he bounces back, right? This is the thing about, you know, rookies in the NFL. It's an adjustment from the college game. But we all know that Kelvin Joseph has the talent. I think he will be our starting cornerback opposite of Trayvon Diggs. And I think he will have a bounce back game this week against the Houston Texans. You know, I don't know really who's going to be matched up against, whether it be, you know, Brandon Cooks or, you know, Kiki Kuti. Uh, but we'll see where that goes. But you know what? It's just, I think there's been a lot of doubt. It almost seems that Kelvin Joseph has become, you know, the second most polarizing player in this team outside of Jalen Smith. And it's just interesting to me because he hasn't played a meaningful snap for the Cowboys yet. Like, he's already going through this, and it's just been preseason so far. So I think we just need to extend Kelvin Joseph, you know, the same courtesy that we gave Trayvon Diggs last year. Yes, there's going to be plays against them, but, you know, it's a learning opportunity. There's a learning curve, especially at the quarterback position going in. Uh, uh, going into your rookie season in the NFL. So I think we just need to, you know, temper back those expectations. Yes, it's preseason too. So there's got time. He's got time to figure it out. And I think, you know, under Dan Quinn, I think we're going to see a much improved defense. So, yeah, these are the things I'm looking for this week against the, the Texans. Uh, let me know what you guys are looking forward to seeing. But that's pretty much it. And Cowboys Collective out.